Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Hindsight, where we see bad situations that can be avoided by good reasoning. But sometimes a situation is unavoidable and self-defense is needed to get you to safety. Happy New Year. That's right. The guys at Hindsight are back at it again in the new year, getting into the swing of things. Sensei Buddha, Mr. Swabe, yes, you. Uh, we're back grinding, giving you these stories, getting you hyped and charged about self-defense and all that good stuff, trying to keep your family safe. So, you know, back on the grind, doing it. Uh, fellas, how you, how you guys doing? Good, good, good. New Year, New Year, Merry Christmas, all the happy holidays, I just say even better, you know, all that time past 15 days into it, uh, you know, we still here grinding, we got our process, we're going to keep going with our process, get you uh, all the self-defense comedy you listening to so you don't get your ass flipped, you still get some laughs in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Shoot. Ah, uh, wow. Boss, well, here we are. Oh, so, oh, here we are in 2018, and, um, you know, hey, it's off to an okay start right now. But um story we got coming up that uh, Beat Physicist is going to be reading is something that we um, usually try to go ahead and, and, and address, and it's dealing with um, securing your home and all that other kind of good stuff, and um, it's something that's very important. A lot of things to consider when uh, you're faced with these kind of situations. So go ahead, beat business is take it away, brother. Okay, you know, today we're gonna be addressing uh the home a home invasion that occurred in Santa Clara County, California. So basically what you have is three home invaders. They break into this home at about four AM, assaulted the homeowner and stole his personal property at gunpoint. So those three of them but um, only two here are listed, Jose Talavera and Maritza Lopez. Okay, uh, a man and woman combination, and also another 17-year-old youth from East Palo Alto, California. <clears throat> and they're withholding the, their name probably because they're a minor. So they, the reports don't say if the homeowner knew who, uh, who the home invaders were. But um, the owner also claims that there were four males and one female. So we'll see how this turns out. But basically, get them at gunpoint. They steal the homeowner's Mercedes-Benz SUV as well. The homeowner then calls uh, 911 from a neighbor's house to report the you know, belongings stolen. And later on, the, um, they catch the bandits. <laughs> at the uh, Vintage Fair Mall in Modesta, California. <sighs> Mr. Suave, <laughs> go in, go in, go in. Oh, man. Uh, shoot. <laughs> These old rat bastards. All right, man, first, first of the year, first, uh, you know, disclaimer of the year, you know, your views and opinions are our views and our views alone. So, uh, you know, don't get in your feelings if you hear them. Get out your feelings. Don't go around and doing everything we say. Remember, this is recommended. If you're not an expert, it is not required. Make sure you're safe and your family safe first. Don't get your ass whipped. Don't get yourself shot. Okay? Let's not do that in 2018. Let's, let's maybe call the police. <laughs> or just call Sensei Buddha. He'll whip the ass for you. Call Suave. I'll put him down for you. <laughs> call B physicist. He just give him the he just give him that stern physicist look. And scare them away, okay? That's what we're going to do in 2018. Let's get into it. Uh, man, first of all, home invaders, right? I'm not sure. And I'll start off by this. I'm not sure of uh, the gun right laws. I can't quote them in California. I don't know um, the actual statutes on that, right? But I know in uh, certain states, it's Florida, New York is very st st stingent, stringent. Um, you're not coming in my house without being greeted uh um very happily with the small diameter of pieces coming back at you because you're not welcome okay and i don't think all of you are leaving you know a good cop buddy of mine used to say uh that people don't tell stories you know 
And, you know, it's not to say you need to go out and go on a murder and speak somebody breaking your house. But look, you got your home, you got your family, you got your kids. You know, that at that point, that's fight or flight. You got to take care of your own. You can't be worrying about these dudes. These dudes are coming for an intent. You don't know what they got. This is why I used to talk to uh, Sensei Buddha from uh, chopping up, talking about uh, martial arts and stuff like that. He says it all the time, too. You've been talking to other people who, who do martial arts and self-defense. I don't want to know what you got. I don't want to know what you know. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a strike first. That way, you're not going to see it. I don't want to see anything you got. So in this situation, man, these, these, these individuals, these rat bastards up to no good, you know, it's ready in the new year. Instead of going, going and getting your goddamn job, go get some unemployment. I don't know. Go, go, on, go on the corner selling rocks for a week just so you can get yourself settled. Not that I'm a, I know, a part of that. Not that I'm, you know, promoting that, but I'm like, you know, there's so many other things you can do instead of going and trying to rob people who putting that hard work, hard time, he's grinding, trying to make a better, you know, living for themselves. And you just want to come and be that little dirt bag and mess it up, you know? And, uh, you know, you, you know, they went in at prime time. I was 4 a.m. Most people are not up at 4 a.m., you know what I mean? So it, it seems, it seems, you know, do they know these people? I know in a, in a little of the pre, the pre facts of the story, uh, Sante Buddha sent us. It seemed like it wasn't a random house. A lot of times, um, the houses are not random. Talking to some criminals uh, themselves, actually dudes who used to do robberies and strong on robberies from my background in the field, uh, they told me, man, the two biggest deterrents, and that is actually statistical, the first big, biggest deterrent of someone trying to break into your house is lighting. That outside, the outside lighting, that bright lighting, you know, that motion sensors, even though it's easily, you can get rid of that. But that is, that is the, like the number one main deterrent to keep people from coming to your house. The second one is a video camera, uh, just like a, a security camera, even if it's working or not. They don't know that. You put it up there in the front and back of the house, that gives them two thoughts. Like, ah, oh, now they got lights. Now they got the camera, so the lights can see maybe the car, see my face, see identifying tattoo, because, you know, all, damn, all the criminals want to have identifying tattoo. You know, that way you can say, hey, this is my label right here. Um, mm. Wait, wait, wait. So you mean the criminals are branding themselves now in terms of uh, <laughs> their technique in breaking I mean, if you, and doing crime? If you, if you want to say... If you want to say that, if I if if uh, we you pick out a lineup of thirty people and only one person got uh, a five finger studded tattoo on their knuckles, it ain't that hard to find that from the video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm you know you know tattooing is a part of your society, our society, your freedom, you know expression. I'm cool with that, but you know if you criminal, you just give it more light to people to catch you. You're being more stupid, and we we thank you for that because most criminals are not bright. So, you know, that's the two biggest things um, that's factual and uh, actual people who, you know, who incarcerated and actually uh, on or working on the other side of it as well. You should tell me that those are the two biggest things that they look for when they go to break into the house. I knew a thing they're starting to do when they break into the house. I know it's going off a little bit from the story is um, especially in Florida. I don't know if they're doing it in other states. They actually wait until the they're not going in this early because they're trying to avoid conflict. They actually wait until like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. when people should be at work. So they're watching people. Then they, they break into the back, open the garage, and then bring a van or moving truck. So now the neighbors might think, oh, so they must be moving. And the garage opens, so they must be there. They're supposed to be there. They go in, close the garage, load up and everything in your house, and then they go right back out. It happened to my homeboy's, um, homeboy's girl's sister cleaned out like three houses on her block like that. And they live in a nice neighborhood. So they, you know, people were watching their patterns. And you know, that's that's taking the criminal elements to a whole nother level. Like I said, these here, you breaking in the house, you waving guns, pistol whipping, beating the owners. Um, that's just some common petty nonsense. These normal dumb criminals that do dumb criminal shit. Um, I don't know if they woke up at the time, um, if all of them had firearms on them. I think self-defense purposes, man. I said, in my home, uh, I can have I can have a weapon or a firearm, knife. Shit, you know, after meeting Buddha, a kubaton hidden somewhere. Just just if I could get a drop on one of these cats, right? If if it if if also, if it can also keep the rest of my parties in my house safe. 
I'm not going to do something that's not going to keep the rest of my people safe. So you got to think about that as well. Most, most of these things happen in a situation like this. You're not happen so fast, you don't have time to process. That's why sometimes when you're just sitting in your house by yourself, you're just driving to work, on the train, going to work, walking, doing some exercise. You got to start thinking about a lot of scenarios that can happen to you. That way you're going off muscle memory, mind memory, so you don't just freeze up. You don't have, you don't know how many times I'm working in, uh, I was working in uh, the prisons and you see people, people fighting, people getting stabbed, blood all over the place. And, you know, the CEOs are frozen. They get what, what you know, they call them the military white face. They just don't know what to do. They're scared. That, that is not a situation you there with your wife, your girl, and your kids. You, you know, you're supposed to be the protector. Oh, vice versa. The woman could be the protector. They're looking to you for that guidance. You, you're you going to set the tone for what happens to the rest of this house. Whether you get beat up or not, they're looking for you. So you can't you can't go on and get white face, you know. So just be prepping your head a little bit on situations like that, I think. Um, you know, so they they went they went in there, stole the SUV. You know, it's not, you know, I, I think some of these luxury cars, I don't know if all of them, or you might you might track them, but a lot of them are have satellite GPS, a lot of them have navy. You know, it might be not may not be hundred percent trackable, but that GPS is connecting to somewhere or satellite somewhere. So there is something, or especially if you got OnStar, you got OnStar, you, you dead to rights, you know? So it's like, go ahead, steal the car. They're going to get you anyway. It's not that, you know, even though a lot of these people just take it to the cop, chop, shop, chop it up. Um, some people uh, will use it for another crime to just dump the car. But, you know, fingerprints are not as easy as they make it on TV. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. So people are thinking, oh, they got fingerprints. No, it's not that simple. It's actually pretty hard to get a good, viable fingerprint sometimes off of vehicles and things like that. I remember back when my ice car was stolen, they couldn't even get a good fingerprint. And these dudes had fingerprints all over the damn place, but it was an apartment. So you couldn't tell whose fingerprints it was, you know? So, you know, that's why, you know, that's just a little more insight into the truth of, this ain't the TV world, this is real life. And all these tests cost money. The departments ain't spending out all this money for these little tests. That's just a sad fact. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm glad they, you know, they did catch these dudes and um, they're not displaying their names. Well, not all of the names. They just displayed two of the people's names. Um, you know, I hope, I hope they get what they get. And this 17 year old, he's running with these cats. I'm, I have a feeling this isn't his first time. He might, I don't know if he's trying to make this a career. He wants to be a career criminal. He want, you know, he wants to take a show on the road and go state to state. They need to catch him now. Send him to a military school. See if his parents, where his parents at? Why they not putting? Why, why, they, not, why they not putting boots to throats on this kid? Huh? Why he out? Why he out here? Even at nineteen, I'm still respecting and take, you know, listening to my parents. What's up with that boot to throat method? I know we in uh we in a day and age where you can't touch your kids, but. I'm putting pause on my kids. I'm sorry. I'm not having you grow up to be like this. I'm, I'm going to teach you the right way. You're going to have consequences. People are too scared to put consequences on the little ones. They need to have consequences. They need to know right and wrong in society. You can't be having this running with, what, 19-year-old, 19-year-old, 17-year-old, and the dorm owner said there was like four of them. So there's another person that's not even mentioned. These are all kids, all kids, all young, dumb kids doing nonsense. So you know what? They're going to get what they deserve. That's what I feel. These are rat bastards. I had, like I said, had it been Sensei Buddha's house, Suave's house, you no know, beat physicists, we still schooling him on the ways of the world. I don't, I, you know, this would have been a completely different outcome. I, I guarantee you, probably would have been a completely different outcome. Would have said three dead shot in home. <laughs> I would have said, oh, no. oh gosh. <laughs> I would have said, damn. Or it might have said, I don't know, you know, uh, Sensei Buddha might be able to uh, verify, but I might have, you know, I believe uh, I was talking to one guy who used to study martial arts and he had some uh, special ops training. Nice punch right above the Adam's apple. If you push, if you follow through and hook to the left or right, you could basically crack that um, esophagus and make someone either pass out or bleed out from choking on the blood. You do four of those quick, somebody come up on you, they're not, they're not expecting that. They're not expecting that, you know? So it's ah, so, so many things. You do an inside kick to someone's leg, that, that, knee, that knee is probably gonna shatter and they're going down. They ain't gonna be worrying about the gun at that point. Uh, you do a two piece, a punch with an elbow right to the jaw, you break that jaw, I believe it's two, 
two two blows to the jaw, right to crack it, that's pain. They're not coming through. You put two thumbs up in someone's armpits. If you got a good enough cl- closeness, that's two that's two pressure points. They they don't at the moment for that. You know, so there's you know depending on the proximity of where these people were, and to the homeowner, to the other people in the house. That's why you gotta teach you know your significant others some things to do. You gotta teach them, yo, I know you don't want to do it, but this is fight or flight now. You better have that switchblade on you. You better treat it like you see on them TV movies. You saw shank, 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 shank. Something, man. <laughs> you got to do something. Mm. I, I will I will say in modest before I sign off. Um, for home defense, and I was, you know, I was talking to a couple other buddies of mine. Um, maybe a nine or a shotgun that has not slugs, but buckshot. Because you want to, if you don't know anybody else in the house, you want to minimize the collateral damage. And that's what the biggest problem is. A lot of law enforcement departments and federal law enforcement are going back to nine millimeters because now that the grain is becoming, uh, making the grain of the firearm now, it's almost comparable to like 40 or 45, but it doesn't start keep going. Once it hits its target, it don't keep going through and they have to worry about it neighbor, the child, sitting that target and falling right after. That's another thing you got to think about when you're shooting inside a house and your family members and, you know, if they're not with you, a nine or, you know, buckshot, shotgun will, well, they're going to hit that clip. Shoot, that's another term. Someone come up in your house, you hear that, you're like, oh, shit. you don't know what's coming out of them barrels. <laughs> you, you, you go. Well, he's gonna think it's the Terminator when he was going click click on that Harley. So, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's that that that, that, that wake you up. That wake you up. That's all I gotta say on this man. They are gonna get what they deserve. This is it's unfortunate. They might. Just, I don't know if they need some counseling. They need some furthering. I'm pretty sure they have some dirty rap sheets on them. This this may be the last. Uh, we don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, hey. Excellent points that were given there, uh, Mr. Suave. And again, like you said, especially with the lighting and then the recounting of experiences that you know of. So this is not any theoretical type of thing. These are stories that you're telling that your people have experienced, you may have experienced, and I'm sure that you have even experienced as well. And criminals are telling me. <laughs> yes. And hey, that's hey, get it from the horse's mouth. That's that's even better. And the thing here is that you touched on it, is the preparation. Lighting around the house, as you said, that is excellent motion sensor. And you know what? To hell with it. Invest in a camera system. Don't even go with a fake camera. Go with a real camera. There was this um, situation where a young girl was being followed. And the guy who was following, he was going to go right up to her home. But he quickly eyed and spied upon and said, hey, there's a camera there, and he just kept walking straight. And I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find out. I don't, I don't know if they ever uh, released the name of that girl. But here's the thing: they didn't say in the article if the gentleman had a wife or kids. But the one thing he most definitely should have, he must get a dog or or some type of an alarm system. And another thing, he must invest in some type of home security system. Hey man, I know you come home, you're comfortable, the day is done. You got to do a perimeter check of your home. You got to make sure all the doors and everything is locked and that um, nobody can get in. And yes, you do need a dog. You may not need a big Rottweiler. You could even have a poodle because the purpose of the dog, they're going to always bark if somebody is walking toward the home. And that's their job. From there, if you choose to use a firearm, bat, bow staff, whatever it is that you're good at, go ahead and do it. And another thing, as Mr. Suave had pointed out, they're going to hear the click and all that other stuff. One of the things that we do, that we train in, in our martial arts, is that to turn off all the lights in your home. Practice walking very softly in your home. If you bust your behind on your own furniture in your own home in the dark, that's your fault. If somebody comes into your home and the lighting is very poorly lit, you should be able to manipulate them and, bust, and have them bust their behind on your furniture, but not you. You should know your environment. But most definitely, you, you got to have a dog or you got to go with an ADT alarm system. Now, the thing here is they're not even certain if this man 
knew these kids or not. And to me, it was very stupid for them to go ahead and steal a late model uh, Mercedes Benz truck or whatever this gentleman was driving because uh, they, they handed it over to the task force and they easily found them in that mall. And the thing was, was when they recovered the vehicle, I believe they had a, uh, a pistol that was recovered and there was a, another kid that was there. It wasn't the other kid that was um, part of the original robbery. And again, Mr. Suave pointed out a great thing. My goodness, I know you, the parents are bogged down with a lot of work or whatever, but if you've got a 19-year-old young man in your home, it's obviously, it's got to be obvious he's getting into some kind of problems or some kind of trouble. These parents are not monitoring them. And the thing that, that's really crazy is that they can, he can persuade a young lady to go ahead and go and, and, and be an accomplice in these kind of crimes. I just don't get it. These parents, they're not checking them out. And also, you need a strong neighborhood watch. A lot of people underestimate that. I know, you know, as they say, tall fences make for good neighbors. But I'm sorry. All of you guys are homeowners. Even if you're not a homeowner, if you guys are in your own apartment building, uh, uh, if, if you have a condo or co-op, you should get to know your neighbors because obviously all of you guys are there on the same page, especially if you have a house that's a little bit stepped up, in my humble opinion. Y'all should be watching each other's backs. It's ridiculous that these, these kids was even able to break into that home. But the one thing that I did like was after that uh, the man had got hurt, they jumped him and took his car, he quickly availed himself to a neighbor's home and he used the phone over there and called and to get the ball rolling for them to catch these kids. But uh, these, these kids, you know, they're, they're facing some, you know, some real stiff time and it doesn't look good for them. My whole thing is I'm just wondering, did this man know these kids? Because for them to steal, I mean, for these kids today, like me, I'm terrible with technology. These kids know everything about the technology, the video games. They know about surveillance systems and stuff like that. They know about computer programming. They had to have understood that there was some type of um, tracking system in a Mercedes-Benz late model truck type Jeep vehicle type. You, they had to have understood that. Were they smacking this guy around, playing the joyride and hang out in the car and then bring it back? What kind of dealings did they have with this man? It's very strange, very strange indeed. So I'm, I'm hoping that there will be uh, some updates toward this for this story. And then again, you know, you've got to invest in training. As Mr. Suave said, oh, I don't want to do it. I've even heard some people try to tell me, they said, oh, you know what, Dave? Martial arts is a luxury. I can't afford the luxury of martial arts training. And, you know, we have a saying in the martial arts, those who cannot defend themselves own nothing, not good fortune, nor even their own life. Remember, man, if someone can walk up to you and take your stuff, that means you didn't own it. And it's, it's extra when somebody is bold enough to be a psycho and break into your home. You're dealing with someone on a whole nother level. I don't care if they're 19 year old teenagers or whatever the case you're saying. They're, they're straight up crazy. I can, I, 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 I can understand when somebody wants to hotwire a car and go for a joyride. You know, you do goofy things like that. You see kids do goofy shit like that. You know, you smack them up, you know, smack them on their behind or whatever. You know, give them community service. But to break into someone's home to be 19 years old and to be armed and carrying pistols, that means you're willing to kill because they, they took valuables and they took the guy's car. And I'm sorry, to have that kind of behavior, you don't have to be that observant as a parent to know that something is wrong with your kid. And as Mr. Suave said, this is not something that you just jump from zero to 60. This is something that they do. They go going around, they're robbing, probably stealing, doing some other petty shit, and now they just step their whole game up into home invasion, straight terrorism. You know, if there's some reform for these kids that can happen, I would, you know, whole, wholeheartedly endorse it. But in my humble opinion, you got to charge them as adults. That's, that's just, to me, that's just so way left field. You can't do it. So the deal is, is that self-defense was most definitely needed in this situation. If he can, in the county, if he lives, if he's able to possess a firearm, as Mr. Suave said, 
using a firearm the distance doesn't completely obliterate the target because you are in your home. Maybe a good, you know, 38 will do it. You know, with a couple of shots, amen. That, that'll more than do it, especially if you're, you're shooting them in the leg or the torso. Whatever the case may be, you shoot to stop them. But most definitely, you should have a dog. You should have proper lighting. You should have an ADT system. If not, you most definitely must have a, a dog. And it should be a medium-sized dog if you're not going to have an alarm system. Get that, you know, a good trained pit bull, bull master, Doberman Pinscher. Take it to training school. You got to protect your home. You got to protect your home. Things are crazy out here, people. And that's uh, my little commentary. Thank you. Okay. So uh, what we should take away from this, one of the things we should take away from this, two things that should be New Year's resolutions for the listeners. Number one, join a dojo. (laughs) Number two, get an alarm system. And uh, number three, get a camera system. Or two and three, you could combine those, I suppose. Uh, any further I totally thoughts? agree. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. I, oh, yeah, we thought you were still talking, man. My bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'll let you, no, I'll no, I'll let you get I, your I, ear out. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're wholeheartedly yeah. right. I, you're wholeheartedly correct and, and, and right and exact with that. I agree with it. And for the people that if you decide to train in your martial arts, here's a couple of things. MMA is awesome. It is fantastic. But in my humble opinion, you're going to need something definitely like boxing and some type of Muay Thai and and Muay Thai and boxing. Why? Boxing is the sweet science of not getting hit. So you get this. So if you're dealing with multiple opponents, you got to sting and pepper up one and then quickly move on to another one. MMA is fantastic if it's a one-on-one situation. Most definitely if somebody's trying to overwhelm you or, you know, other nefarious intentions that a person may have. But if it's a one-on-one situation, that's when you're going to need that mixed martial arts. You might need an art like Hapkido or Jiu-Jitsu that's in there that you can hit and move. And we're talking like police tactical Jiu-Jitsu. But most definitely get into your boxing, get into your Muay Thai. And you should also, if you can, take a Filipino course. And I mean, say Filipino, like a Filipino. Filipino Cali course when you're doing pistol disarms, knife disarms. And as the saying goes, hey man, if you can avoid the knife and put something between you and that weapon, by all means, do that. Even if you have to run, run. But you should know how to, you know, at the most dire circumstances, if you got to, you got to learn how to defend against that knife and most definitely how to defend against that pistol to learn pistol disarms, play the humble cowardly even even if you have to urinate on yourself to convince your aggressor that you're, you're a complete punk so that when they get there to you and you see a shot you would go in for your disarm but you should take courses and how to disarm you should do that you, you, you will have to train there's no joke out here and that's my little four friends. true that true that you know last last year we used to say if you could spend thirty to forty dollars on a bottle, you could spend thirty to forty dollars and get a background check. This year, I'm saying if you could spend fifty to sixty dollars, eighty dollars on, or one hundred and fifty dollars on a pair of sneakers or a shirt or a pair of pants, you could take that same money and go take a self defense course for the week. And just start doing that every week and go get yourself yes. trained and educated in something. Put the Jordans down, put the Gucci pants down, put the belts down. Go shop at Burlington or Ross for couple of months and go get yourself properly trained for an accredited place so you know what the hell you're doing so you don't get caught out here with your ass out. <laughs> mm. Mm. I completely agree with that. I completely agree. And, I, and that's another thing. And, and, and no, no, Mrs. Swabby, hey, you bring up a very good point. I have met a lot of people and they'll always say that, hey, man, I know how to fight. But like you had said earlier, when you constantly train and train and train, You want it to be a reflex so that while your mind is screaming and crying out in fear, your body does what it's been trained to do. You stay calm, uh, yeah. Yeah. You can can be calm or you can be screaming in fear, but you're taking away the gun. You're disabling your opponent with kicks and punches. 
slaps to the ears, eye gouges, whatever it is you need to save yourself. And you need to train in doing that so that you don't have to think about what you're going to do. Because if you start to panic and then start thinking about what you're going to do, you're going to be at loss. You're going to be at a loss. Believe you me. Working in these nightclubs and stuff like that, me being a big guy, it was always the same thing. What you going to do, Biggie? What you going to do, Biggie? What you going to do, Biggie? Hey, look, big pun. They were weird shit. And then, <laughs> yeah, it was always weird, man. And then um, they love to sucker punch you and swing on you. But those covering and, 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 and washing techniques that we use, it, it saved my face from many a punches. And I grabbed the guy and put him in a small tripping technique to throw him to the floor or spin them out on their butt. And then we just put them on the floor and I just put my back, put my body on them. And then it was over. But you got to train for that. If you don't train for that, when the time comes, it can catch you off guard. You know, but yeah, they got, they got to go do seminars. They always got some MMA seminar going on. They always got a nice Muay Thai introduction course going on. And the thing is, you want instruction. To me, I do believe that you can have a home video training course. But here's the thing. Let's say you do a boxing course. Don't just go and get the boxing video. Go to the boxing gym, and then they will either have their own boxing DVD or tape for you to follow along. It will be based on the lessons and the basics that they just took you through. So now it will be good rote memorization, and then you check in with them hopefully once or twice a week, every, every week or whatever the case is. But you must make a commitment to work out on your own. Same thing with your kicks and your punches, man. If you're going to be doing Muay Thai, take the Muay Thai course. Hopefully at the end of that course for the day, they'll give you a DVD saying, hey, man, we covered this in our class. You just did it. Practice this until you see us next week or maybe even at the end of the month. It's going to be a lot of self-motivation. You're going to have to motivate yourself. And you don't want your skills to slip. And then when you're talking about doing the Filipino martial arts or any weaponized system, when you're dealing with um, special tactics and pistol disarms and stuff like that, well, you're going to most definitely, definitely need to uh, go in, train, and, and get, that, get that training with qualified instructors for those pistol disarms, knife self-defense, all that other kind of good stuff. And, uh, you know, training works, which you got to do this. Okay, so... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I would also like to add, you know, there's some people out there that, um, <clears throat> you know, give gift certificates for their loved ones to go to the spa or, you know, they have a gym membership or something like that where they could spoil themselves and relax and get massaged and touched by some random stranger that they don't know. I guess what I'm... I like where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah. I like where you're going with this. I like where you're going with this. Make sure you plug Sensei Buddha in properly. I like where you're going with this. Yeah, so... <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, if you're going to get touched by a random stranger... Well, for one, I don't like getting touched by a random stranger. That's why I'm all about self-defense. Boss. <laughs> Boss. So... <laughs> so <laughs> So why not use that money to spoil yourself and figure out how not to be touched by a random stranger, if that makes any sense. That's, I think there's a lot of dojos out there that give gift certificates too. So go out there and see them and uh, see what they could do for you. But uh, also Sensei Buddha, you know, he does seminars. Um, he does private sessions and all that. I've been... Uh, talking to him to try to come out to Tennessee and do some things but this dude is uh, acting all semi-retired no, no, no. right now <laughs> in the near future in the near future that's all it is everything will be available in the near future that's all oh, we look at definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely in the near future but if I may recommend my head instructor was Angel Robles Wrenchy Angel Robles of the Temple of Arts Dojo of American Tegoju if you would like to have some excellent firearms instruction for my people that are up here on the East Coast. He's out in Dover, and you can reach him at info at temple dash of arts of 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 dash arts dot com. His number is nine seven three three six one three six one four. Again, his number is nine seven three 
And it's at info at temple-of-arts.com. The reason why I recommend him so highly, he's a certified pistol range master. He's my head instructor. And he, of course, represents American Tay Goju, as we are all underneath him and with that banner. And I think you will find no finer instruction and a more excellent person dealing with and concerned with personal safety and self-defense than someone like uh, Master Angel Robles. Thank you. Go ahead, gentlemen. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for that, uh, Sensei Buddha. Analysis from you, Mr. Suave. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. The website is hindsight.com. You can email us, uh, hindsight at hindsight.com or uh, Sensei Buddha at hindsight.com Mr. Suave at hindsight.com we'll get your emails we're on social media, we're on YouTube we've got plenty of videos up plenty of demonstrations up you know, come take a look at us um, there's going to be more things more comment, more content coming in the future and uh, so stay tuned and keep listening and you know keep rocking with us like it. Love it. Of course. All right. Peace. Take care, folks.